What's going on everyone, it's Sam, welcome back to the channel. Today I have a quick one discussing just exactly how each project has created the MCU's multiverse and how it will affect Doctor Strange 2 in the Multiverse of Madness. My Shang-Chi review and other related videos about that movie will be out later this week, so if you're new here or just like Marvel, the MCU comics, and everything in between, subscribe to the channel, and other than that, let's get into the video. Let's go. It's no secret where the MCU is headed, and like Kevin Foggy has even stated, the next evolution of storytelling will be through the multiverse and the quantum realm. All of these Phase 4 projects aside from Falcon and Winter Soldier are creating damaging effects on the multiverse. WandaVision, Loki, What If, Spider-Man No Way Home, and even Shang-Chi have and will contribute to the multiverse saga, but how exactly? Let's take a look. Loki gave us the birth of the multiverse. We were introduced to a variant of Kang the Conqueror who explained all about timelines and parallel universes, and by the end of the show, the pathway to the multiverse is exploded upon. Branch realities and the interconnectivity of multiple timelines and branches intertwine, creating what we know as the multiverse. This is definitely the biggest event so far, and because chronologically it takes place directly after Endgame, as Disney Plus portrays it, from that moment on, it is now the Kickstarter to every other multiverse event that we'll see. And after Loki came What If, where we watch The Watcher, who is watching these stories branch out in their respective universes. And if you haven't seen yet, quick spoiler warning, Captain Carter and Supreme Strange from What If Episode 1 and 4 are expected to make appearances in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. This would completely confirm the already stated canon of the show like the writer AC Bradley has stated. And specifically within Episode 4 of What If, we see the shattering of an absolute point in time by Supreme Strange, which is yet another disastrous event contributing to the multiverse implosion to the point that even the Watcher almost has to interfere. Now, WandaVision does take place three weeks after the events of Endgame, and the significance that the Westview Hex almost acts like a pocket reality within the main timeline does play into factor here. I've spoke about it before, but the Hex structure coincides with the basic building blocks of the universe, and like we see in the Guardians when they use jump points from time to time, it could literally be the material or energy from a point in time if the Hex was in fact a cross-dimensional portal or let's just say rift. And so when Wanda is reading the Darkhold, another object that is cross-dimensional, she hears the existence of her children in a different reality or dimension. Now, big theory here, but this could also mean that when the Hex was taken down, it worked exactly like the pruning effect in Loki, just replacing them somewhere else in the multiverse because we know that matter or energy cannot truly die out. Shang-Chi spoilers if you haven't seen the movie yet, but the Ten Rings were alluded to as a beacon that is pinging someone else in another dimension. Now, we don't know who that threat exactly is yet, but there are definitely some ideas which I'll talk about in a video coming up. But whoever it is, it definitely has some Avengers level threat, being that we do see Captain Marvel and Bruce Banner, they were also in attendance of the post credit scene. And with the introduction of Tao Lo and Shang-Chi and the way Wong explained the beacon, these new dimensions will bring us another layer of the multiversal effect, especially with the origin of the rings not being essentially from our main timeline or reality. And finally, Spider-Man No Way Home is about to give us the first merging of timelines and will bring us a live-action Spider-Verse with both Raimi and Web villains and other Spider-Men due to a spell gone wrong because Peter was trying to cover up his identity crisis. As we see from the trailer and all of these events before, this is most likely the breaking point, or as he who remains would refer to it, the threshold. Remember, the events of Loki, even though they are after Endgame, take place beyond time and at any given moment. So theoretically, all of these events, though being at different points in time from each other, as we see in the movies, they all happen at the same time from a Loki timeline perspective. In the Citadel at the end of time, it sees all of these events happening at once, which is what I believe the threshold is to be, and what exactly Kang refers to. I know there was this big theory that the exact moments of Wanda becoming the Scarlet Witch and He Who Remains Dying were meant to sync up, but that just happened to be a coincidence within the length of each respective story. But the idea that it actually all happens at once and contributes to the crossing of the threshold is a big factor and does play into it. We don't have a definitive answer on what exactly the threshold meant or what contributed to it, so this is just my theory on that. So comment your thoughts on the perception of the threshold and what do you think that fully means. But with all this being the case, this does eventually lead us to Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, unleashing insanely powerful beings like Shumagorath, and even possibly connecting us to old friends from the Fox universe like Professor X. Even Ghost Rider is a longtime rumor of showing up in Doctor Strange 2 as well, especially with the Darkhold likely paying a part in the story. This is going to be the first major event of the Multiverse Saga, and probably the biggest until we see Kang and the Multiverse War storyline as well. 
I mean, Doctor Strange is going to be huge, and Loki is also supposedly supposed to be in it, and we all know what happened in that show. So you can see all the connectivity that's currently happening, each project is slowly developing rules and changes that all contribute to one thing, a multiverse of madness. So let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below, and do you think Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness will be the biggest MCU event yet? And also, thank you, I know there's been a lot of new subscribers, the next goal is 1k and maybe I'll do a little pop figure giveaway when we hit it, who knows. So follow me on Twitter at AnotherMarvelG for all news and updates, like this video if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel, and other than that, I just want to say thank you, I'm another Marvel guy, and I'll catch y'all on the blip.